And then the Saccharomyces comes into the equation too, right? Which is kind of marketed and sold as a probiotic, but technically it's a beneficial yeast. I love Saccharomyces. It's something- It, it crowds been- out. It crowds out. So it has beneficial effects of crowding out. It also is shown to be very anti-C. diff, anti-H. pylori, anti-blasto, and it has immunomodulating benefits, increasing IgA levels too. Yeah, we love Saccharomyces. It helps the mycotoxins too. I've seen it in a lot of people. And uh, when I talk with Dr. Nathan, who is a guy who treats a lot of mold patients, he talked about Saccharomyces being great for specifically, I think it's actually metabolizing or changing the structure of the mycotoxins to make them more water soluble, but there may be sort of a crowding out effect with the mold too. So it's just a great overall thing. So if you're working on a Uh, gut healing protocol and you haven't used Saccharomyces, that may be something to chat with your practitioner about. It may be something great to add in. Yep. I like it. That makes a lot of sense to me. So when we have that upper left quadrant pain, right, your stomach for the most part is going to be just right in usually this area here. So this is kind of your, this point right here is your HCL point. And this point's more of your enzyme point. So like pancreas, small intestine is like usually right here. Stomach's usually going to be right in this area here. And then you have the esophagus going up here, obviously, right? And then this esophageal sphincter can stay open when we don't have enough acidity and we have bacterial overgrowth. Then you can have a lot of that regurge or that reflux happening when we have inadequate levels of acid. So one thing, if you kind of take your hand right here and you you follow the sternum down, right, where it kind of tucks into the left, if, if you rub it a little bit and it's a little bit sensitive, that point's normally sensitive anyway, but if it's really heightened, is a chance there's inadequate levels of HCL in the stomach. So that's a good little kind of pressure point there. Yeah. And people listening uh, that can't see, he's showing just down right there at the sternum. And then you can follow the rib line down to the left, or you could follow it down to the right and you could check both sides. That's a really cool thing that you can do in person when you're working with a practitioner is you can palpate these points. And I remember uh, when I was in uh, one of my schooling lessons, we were with the teacher and we had a, a lady who laid down on the table and everybody was coming up and palpating. And man, this lady about jumped off the table when we hit that HCL point. So of course we didn't have a stool test on her, but man, I bet she had some infection going on. Yeah. And you, it's good to rub that. And then you can kind of rub a couple other spots to see if it really is, is heightened. And then you can also start, start treatment, right? Make diet changes, add in support, right? start addressing microbials down the road and see if that changes. But again, the biggest thing I really want to highlight for people listening, we live in this antibiotic culture today, right? You have an infection, antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. And so what tends to happen is people are in kind of my six R step, right? The fourth R is removing the bugs, right? Replace the, um, remove the bad foods, replace the enzymes and acids and bile salts, repair the gut lining and the hormones, remove the infections, repopulate good bacteria, prebiotics retest that fourth R is remove the infections. People go to this first. We live in this like antibiotic generation. People are programmed, kill, 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 kill. It's the biggest mistake you can make. Some people can get away with it. If you're really healthy and you don't have an overabundance of inflammation, you can get away with it. Most can't. And they end up creating a whole bunch of problems. And I tell my patients, the first rule of functional medicine, right? The first rule of fight club is don't make yourself more sick. It's really important. So that's why that fourth R, that remove, that second remove, right? The first removes the food, right? The fourth R, the second remove is removing the infections. We do it in that order because we're trying to calm down the immune system, trying to support our anti-inflammatory system so they can deal with inflammation and stress better. We're working on digesting and breaking down our food. We're working on motility. That allows us to set the table so we can come in there and wipe out the, the bad bugs.